Command received. Activating. Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here. Welcome to a new episode. Yes, it has been a really long time. Um, I don't know how long it's been since I've released a video, but I am back and you are going to start seeing regular video content once again. And I do appreciate your patience as uh, I, need, I took a much needed break. All right, what are we going to do in this video? Well, this game is almost out. As a matter of fact, by the time you are watching this video, it may already be in your hands. You may be playing it. However, right now I am getting ready to start playing it with hopefully some players in Atlanta once the book lands in their hands. Now, the, the book is uh, the rule book for Stargrave. It's very similar to Frostgrave. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Frostgrave, if you're not, it is a skirmish war game. You're going to have 10 miniatures. You're going to play against an opponent with 10 miniatures. The object of the game is to send your little sci-fi minis in to gather data and loot and get out and escape with your life so that you can do it all again in the next, uh, the next game. Now, speaking of next games, there are 10 scenarios in this new rule book. The very first scenario is called The Botched Deal. This one is very uh, reminiscent of Firefly. It takes place on a settlement. There is a central structure surrounded by six buildings and your players will you know, run on, grab the data, and hopefully get off um, and, and fight the enemy if they make, make an appearance. Now, in the botched, uh, the botched deal, uh, those seven structures, the center one and the six that go around it, you can make those out of chipboard, you can make those out of whatever you like. However, if you continue to watch this video, I'm gonna show you on the work table uh, what I did to make them very cheap, very inexpensively. How cheap? between a dollar fifty and two dollars for each per structure. So you could spend less than about ten dollars to uh, come up with some really cool sci-fi terrain that you're going to be able to use again and again. And as a matter of fact, there is going to be a download that's totally free. You can find it in the description below that will um, go along with this project. Let's get to the work table and see how to make these structures. Okay. For this project, we're going to start with something called a gang box. This, uh, these are different shaped boxes that you can find at Home Depot or Lowe's. I've done projects using these in the past, so this may look familiar to you. These come in a variety of colors and materials. Uh, there's metal ones, and they're very heavy. Not very heavy, but relatively speaking, they're heavier than plastic. They also cost a little more. Now, this one right here is, is pretty small. It's about two and three quarters by two and three quarters, which is the largest area. This one right here was 86 cents. I bought six of them. This round one right here was, I believe, $1.40. Uh, sometimes they come with screws or nails uh, embedded in them. I know that this round one had some nails, and this one had two screws that were in this slot and that slot right there. And you, you definitely want to take those out before you, you uh, prime them. And these were primed dark gray in preparation for what I'm going to be doing. Now, what I'm going to do for these, I'm going to do a combination of things. I'm going to do some, some add-ons, some junk pieces to, to make them look a little more realistic. But I'm also going to be using stickers. Now, let me show you what I have here. Now, I designed these in Inkscape. Uh, I, Inkscape is a free graphics program. You can get it for Windows, Mac, whatever. I created two sheets here. And I will make this available as a downloadable uh, free uh, document for you. So you can go and print these off. I went and had these printed at my local print store. They were $1.50 a sheet, so $3 in all. And um, I had them printed on the white paper. The, this is vinyl stickers. Vinyl comes in either the white or the clear. Do not get the clear. And I'm going to show you why. I did one gang box with the clear. And I'm going to show you, I don't know if you can even, yeah, you can see it there. It's not real readable because anywhere that there is not color, it's clear. So it's see-through. But even then, the ink, like this, this uh, canister right here is supposed to be white. And as you can see, it's very, very dull. So um, you're definitely going to want to have them printed on the white vinyl sticker paper. And again, it's $1.50 a sheet. By the time I cut all this up, and do six of these and one of these, it's gonna come out to about a dollar fifty, not not quite a dollar fifty for each one of these in terms of stickers and parts, and about two dollars for this. So you can see it's a very inexpensive 
way to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get these uh, gang boxes uh, uh, decorated with the stickers rather than make you sit here and watch me uh, cut all this out. I'm just going to go ahead and cut them out offline and then I will do a top down uh, video to show you uh, some of the applications of the stickers. Okay, for the smaller rectangular uh, gang boxes, I have a few stickers here. I have some red and yellow warning, uh, you know, uh, warning strips, I guess. Uh, this is going to represent a, a solar panel or a series of solar panels with a slight glow. I've got some closed shutter windows, a door, a side panel. The door and the panel have the same number, N9. And then I've got some smaller stickers that are a little more intricate. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them yet, but. Okay, so now I have one of the gang boxes covered with the stickers, and I'll just rotate this around a little bit. It's got a door, some shutters, uh, striping, some tanks here, solar panel on the top. It's a bit flat, okay? It looks good. I'm pretty pleased with it, but it's flat. The stickers really don't uh, help make it stand out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through my junk drawer. If you don't have a junk drawer, actually I have two and they're called buckets. They're junk buckets. I keep all kinds of things in there, little bits and bobs that I get from other kits, toys, breaking off parts and things like that. I'm going to go diving through that and see if there's anything I can find in a sufficient quantity that I can liven up six of these. Let me go get that junk box. I'll be right back. All right, so one of the easiest go-tos for sci-fi is this stuff called embroidery mesh. We also call it granny grating. It's plastic, flexible, easy to cut. There are one, two, three, four flat pieces on here that are just screaming for the granny grating. So I'm just going to cut uh, a couple, um, looking to see what size they are. They're three wide by about one, two, three, four, five, about five deep so that's real easy to cut just a real small square like that and glue and put four of them on there like so So while these are drying, I'm going to pull out the junk box. This is number one of two. All right, so I have got the round one done. I'm just going to rotate this around here for you. You can see I've got various stickers put on it including at the top here and uh, I've got the light glued it's on pretty good I'm gonna let that glue continue to dry plus I 
put this post, sort of like an antenna, on one side. The glue is dried uh, for the granny grating also. This is looking really good. I, I think I'm going to leave this as is because I don't want to go uh, too far. You know, you, um, you do too much and it just ruins the effect. So now I'm going to take this round one and just add the granny grating and a few other details. And I'll uh, time lapse that so you don't have to watch me do all of them. Okay, so there you go. That is how I made this round central structure right here and this rectangular one with the stickers and the extra bits glued on. I need to make five more of these, but it was very easy to make. I, I made this one in less than five or 10 minutes. You know, it's cutting out all the stickers and gluing everything on. So these are gonna look really cool on the table along with my Stargrave Warband. All right, if you have any questions or comments about this video, please post them below. Again, the uh, there's a link in the description below where you can go and download the stickers that I use to decorate these, uh, these boxes. You can find these at the hardware store, as I mentioned. I don't have the model number. Um, this one, it just doesn't, it's hard to read inside these, but it's about two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Uh, square on a side and about two inches wide. This is a four inch diameter uh, one. So you should hopefully be able to find these. They're pretty, they're pretty standard stuff at the hardware store. Look for it in the electrical uh, department or just ask someone to point you to the gang boxes. So that's all I have for you in this video. I'd like to remind you to please come join me and my fellow guild masters over at the Tabletop Crafters Guild. I've still participated here and there. I've sort of lurked for a while, but we are growing strong. The numbers continue to rise as more and more people discover uh, wargaming and RPGs and the need to create terrain. And they're joining us there at that Facebook group uh, and sharing what they're making, asking questions, you know, participating in conversations. And we welcome all of you to come and join us if you're not already a member. I would also like to invite you to come join me over at my own page, the uh, Tabletop Engineer Facebook page. In addition to the Facebook page, I also produce two monthly magazines. One is called Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Gaming uh, Magazine. The other is called the RPG and War Game Supply Sourcebook. You can find information on both of those in the description below. Uh, the, the RPG and Wargame Supply Sourcebook comes out at the first of the month and it's basically a catalog of businesses and services that offer products and services to us, Wargamers and RPGers. Companies get a free uh, half page ad in every issue, no strings attached. If you are a seller of a product or a service that's related to Wargaming or RPGs, check the link below. And there's uh, information on the, uh, the web page uh, where you can get your free half page ad. Again, no strings attached, goes in the magazine, stays. Bexham's Bazaar comes out every month. It's got, it's got gaming resources for RPGs and war gamers. Interestingly enough, for the Stargrave game, I have a 10 part scenario or a campaign that is going to be a solo campaign for Stargrave, uh, it will, it's called the Derelict, and each month, for 10 months, each month there will be a new chapter that is going to tell the story, uh, I can't give away too much, but if you are a, if you're interested in Stargrave and are looking at possibly getting a solo campaign of some sort, uh, you'll definitely want to check out Bexham's Bazaar because I will be putting that in there. That's it. I'm Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Uh, next week, I'll be back on Wednesday with a new video. Everybody, take care.
Each month, Bexum's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. For details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing.